This is an overview of chapter two of Triola's book. Um, however, it could be an overview of any book that is going to talk about descriptive statistics and visual um, means of describing those statistic, uh, statistics, and as well as um, numeric methods. So in the next two chapters of Triola's book, we will be discussing just those um, type of descriptive statistics, both visually descriptive and mathematically described. And that's what I'm going to summarize here as Triola summarizes in section 2.1. So there are two types of statistics. There are descriptive statistics and there are inferential statistics. Descriptive statistics is what we will, with Triola's book, you be discussing in chapters 2 and 3. Um, the descriptive statistics that we will start with are the visual, the graphic descriptions of statistics. Inferential statistics are going to be saved for later on after we have discussed some theory and then we'll start in on those. So descriptive statistics describe the characteristics of the data. So there are five important characteristics of data that we wish to describe. The um, mnemonic Civ dot, much like PEMDAS for describing order of operations, can help us to remember the characteristics that we are going to want to describe for our data. So let's talk about Civ dot and um, learn what it means. So the C in Civ dot stands for center. One of the important things about data is where is the center of this data? Now, depending upon the types of data, remember we had um, the four levels of measurement. We had the nominal and then we had ordinal data that were both qualitative types. And then we had interval and ratio data, which were both uh, quantitative, so qualitative, nominal, and ordinal, and quantitative, interval, and ratio. And we would like to describe the center of all different types of data. Now, it's there are many different types of measure for center, and we will learn some that are appropriate for all types of data, and then we will learn some others that are only appropriate for the qualitative data types and then ones that are only appropriate for quantitative data types. So the center is exactly what you would expect it to be, the middle of the data. Where is that middle? Now the next thing that we'll be talking about is variation. Variation is the V in Civ dot. And variation tells us about the spread of the data. Now, there's many ways as well to, descri uh, to describe the variation of data. Now, variation can describe how far of a range altogether the data has, but more often than not, we talk about variation from the center of the data. Variation is most useful to us in terms of quantitative data, interval and ratio data. Um, Every once in a while, you'll talk about variation of data for qualitative types, but that's much more rare. Now, the center and variation, we're going to be able to start to see those in terms of the histograms that we'll see in the second uh, or the third section of this chapter. But center and variation, we really start to quantify by the descriptive statistics that we will go over in chapter three of Triola's book, the ones that are mathematical descriptions. Now the next thing that we're going to talk about is the D in Civ dot, and the D is for distribution. Another way of um, saying what distribution is, is to talk about the shape of the data. So distribution is really um, another way of saying what shape does the data take on. Now the distribution of the data, we're going to be very easily, uh, we can very easily see the distribution of data through a histogram, which is what our uh, second section of chapter two in Triola's book is going to show us. So let me just show you these pictures here. We have three different pictures here. This picture kind of shows a mound in the middle, and that's something that we would call somewhat normal data. Normal data, um, you can think of that at like a bell-shaped curve. That's um, uh, one example of normal data the kind like your grades are. Now this one here, we have a little bit more of a hump over here. This is what we call skewed data. And then this is another type of a symmetric data. And this symmetric, as opposed to skewed, is all kind of balanced in the middle. The normal type of data is symmetric data like this one, but this is a very unique shape. This is what we call a uniform data. 
um, type. So uniform and normal are both symmetric, whereas this one with the bump on one side, um, or you could draw it with the bump over on this side as opposed, those are called skewed. So we'll talk about the shape, and one of the things that comes up um, is skewness, and we're going to talk about skewness as being symmetric, or left skewed, or right skewed, um, other names for left and right skew or our le um, positive and negative skewness. And we'll give names to those and show you which of these would be considered left and right skew or positive and negative skew um, based upon numeric measures. So that'll be Chapter 3 in Triola's book. Now, when we take a look at the next letter, our O, O stands for outliers. Outliers are exactly what you might expect. An outlier is something that kind of stands away from everything else, and that's exactly what an outlier is in statistics. Outliers stand away from the rest of the data. These outliers can be normally occurring variation. Um, we all know that if we look, take a look at heights of people, right, most people kind of are in the average height range, and then you have people that are um, a little bit shorter and a little bit taller, and then you have those people that are extremely short and extremely tall. We know that that occurs, right? That sometimes you get a really tall person, sometimes you get a really short person, but those really tall and really short people are indeed outliers. And we want to see when we do have an outlier from the data, when there's something that's different, because that will help us to determine if we have normal data, because normal data doesn't typically have um, outliers. It will also help us to determine um, you know, how to deal with a piece of data that is on the outside if it's an outlier. And we also can sometimes see things that are um, not sampling error, but non-sampling error, those mistakes that we make. So outliers sometimes come about because we have done something incorrectly in data entry, um, as well as just being a naturally occurring um, item. Now the last one, our T in CivDOT, stands for time. Now time data is quite important, um, however, in our study in this class, time is not going to be something that we're going to spend a lot of time, uh, of time on, no pun intended there. Time is, um, it was mentioned by Triola when, you know, when he talked about the three different types of, um, of observation observational studies. He talked about cross-sectional studies, he talked about retrospective studies, and he talked about prospective studies. Now the cross-sectional study, there's no time involved in that, but a retrospective study can be combined with a cross-sectional study and combined with a prospective study um, and it forms time. For instance, one of the things that happens a lot of times in medical studies are that they will find out, okay, what's happening with someone prior to having a treatment, then they'll measure whatever it is that they're looking at, making it an experiment, right, something's measured um, for effects, so they measure before, then they measure after the treatment, and then five years after the treatment was um, given, they'll measure again, and this gives us a time reference, and we can see help how much the treatment may have helped um, look at the mortality rate um, of people with the um, that has undergone the treatment compare and contrast it to people who do not undergo the treatment with the same type of illness um, so time can be very very important it's just not going to be a big deal in our studies here so these are the things that we're going to be studying in the next two chapters really and in this chapter most of what we're going to see is distribution we're going to talk a little bit about outliers and very, very briefly about center and maybe a little bit about variation. Oops, looks like my battery's running out. All right, so I will see you in the next lecture to begin talking about histo or excuse me, talking about frequency tables, which then will help us to talk about histograms.